بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ العلیم الخبیر المتقن نظام العالم بلا معین و نصیر فسبحان اللہ الذی حکمته بالغة و علمه غزیر و نعمه واصلة الى كل صغیر و کبیر و نشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک له فی نقیر ولا قطمیر و نشہد ان سیدنا و مولانا محمدا عبده و رسوله الذي هدانا بكتاب منیر و دعانا الى اللہ بالانذار و التبشیر صلی اللہ علیہ و على آلہ و صحبہ ما دامت الكواکب تسیر اما بعد فقد قال اللہ تبارک و تعالی فی القرآن المجید والفرقان الحمید اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا کتب علیکم الصیام کما کتب علی الذین من قبلکم لعلکم تتقون صدق اللہ العظیم Honorable scholars, respected brothers, elders, mothers and sisters Allah Jalla wa Ala has referenced Qiyamah in the Qur'an with many names. So at times Allah refers to Qiyamah as Yawm al Jami, the day of assembly. At times Allah refers to it as Yawm al Taghabun, the day of victory and defeat. Allah refers to it as Yawm al Talaq, the day of meeting. Allah refers to it as Yawm At-Tanad The day when mutual slogans will be called out This one screaming for that one, that one screaming for this one وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّرِ أَن قَدْ وَجَدْنَا مَا وَعْدَنَا رَبُّنَا حَقَّا فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعْدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّا When the dwellers of paradise, may Allah make us from amongst them, will call out to the occupants of hell. And they will say to them, whatever Allah promised us is absolute, it's real, it's tangible, it's visible. فَهَلْ وَجَدْتُمْ مَا وَعْدَ رَبُّكُمْ حَقَّا How about you? How's things for you on that side? And of course, they will be in a crisis. So they will respond by saying, وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ أَصْحَابَ الْجَنَّةِ أَنْ أَفِيضُوا عَلَيْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ Yes, indeed, what Allah said is absolute. But we are in a total crisis. Can you send down some water for us? Can you send down some help for us? يَوْمَ يَقُولُ الْمُنَافِقُونَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتُ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أُنْذُرُونَ نَقْتَبِسْ مِن نُورِكُمْ When the disbeliever, when the hypocrite would say to the believer, can you just look little this side here? Sometimes it's dark and there's no light, so can you shine your light here? Can you just focus some of your energy towards us? It would be said to them, go and search for your own light. While the believer will be reciting, Rabbana atmim lana noorana. Rabbana atmim lana noorana. Oh Allah, complete our light, perfect our light. So Allah has referred to Qiyamah in the Quran with many different names. And there's one name that Allah has referred to Qiyamah as وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ And remind them of the day of intense regret. يَوْمَ الْآزِفَةِ It's coming very quickly. أَزِفَةِ الْآزِفَةِ it's coming very quick, very soon, very rapid, very swift. But the name of this day of Qiyamah is the day of regret. Yawm al-Hasra. What is the day of regret? Regret for even the believer who will enter paradise, 
he would regret if I did better, I would have earned more. So can you possibly imagine the regret and the remorse and the lament and the pain and the agony of a person who unfortunately defaulted and did not earn paradise? The ulama say, while Qiyamah will be a day of regret, and that is its name, but some people's regrets will be more intense than others. For example, amongst those people is Rajulun Alimun, Yuhadithun Nas, Ya'malun Nasu bi ilmihi, Wala Ya'maluhu wa bi nafsihi. May Allah save us. One is a person who advocates, who promotes, who encourages, who exhorts people towards virtue, who stimulates people to do good. And people take to his message and they effect the change in, his li in their lives. There was a brother once I met in the Caribbean. I was on a lecture program and he said to me, he said, Sheikh, I want you to meet one brother. So I'm like, okay, we'll meet him after the event. Then the next day he came to me and says, please, you need to come and meet this brother. So I said, all right, let's see how we can free time. But I said, what's the passion? What's the urgency that you want me to meet him? He said, I was not a Muslim. And this brother brought me into the deen. And unfortunately, he has left the deen. He was the cause of me coming into the deen. And unfortunately, he has slipped out of the deen. May Allah protect us. One of the du'as in the Quran, Allah says, of the pious is, Oh Allah, don't cause our hearts to deviate. Don't cause our hearts to deviate after you have guided us. Oh Allah, only you can keep it focused and aligned. Another person whose regret will be intense on the day of Qiyamah. So it's a day of regret. Is a person, Rajulun, Jama'al Mala, wa mana'a minhu huquq Allah. A person who gathered wealth. He earned, he lived, and he gathered. So his whole life was just gathering, gathering. And then he passed on. And his whole excitement was just to gather and count. Gather and count. And nobody can describe this more aptly than Allah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Suratani fil Quran badaat bil wail. Ihdahuma fi amwalin nas wa thani fi aradin nas. Suratani fil Quran badaat bil wail. There are two chapters in the Quran that start with wail. Wail can mean wadiyan, wadi min awdiyatin nar. A pit from the pits of hell. May Allah save us. A valley from the valley of hell. Or it could mean a curse, woe be to you. And either or, it's severe. So there are two chapters in the Quran that Allah starts with wail. One is with regards to those who are fraudulent in their deals, in their money matters. And the other are those who slander the honor of people. Wailun lil mutaffifin. Woe be to the fraudster. Woe be to the fraudster. Alladheena idha ktaalu ala nasi yastawfoon. That's fine. That's not a problem. The problem is the next part. Wa idha kaaluhum aw wazanuhum yukhsiroon. Alladheena idha ktaalu ala nasi yastawfoon. So when they need to measure from people, then they take full. Hey, listen, that's not a kilo. Hey, listen, that's not 500 grams. 
That's fine. That's not a problem. That's your right. You're entitled to. But it becomes evil and wicked when you are meticulous in demanding your due, but not meticulous in giving others their due. So you're very particular to remind a Muslim, you owe me money. But what about the others whom you owe money to? وَإِذَا كَالُوهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ And when they need to give weight or measure, grain or otherwise, to other people, يُخْسِرُونَ Then they fall short. Then they give less. Then they cheat. And so what does Allah say? Subhanallah. Allah says those that are guilty of cheating in their trade and their business, it looks like they forgot that they have an interview with me. It looks like they forgot they have an interview. أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَٰئِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثٌ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٌ يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Don't they know? Don't they realize? Have they forgotten that they will be resurrected for a supreme day? يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَوْ عَلِمْتَ بِهَوْلِهِ لَفَرَرْتَ مِنْ أَهْلٍ وَمِنْ أَوْلَادِ يَوْمٌ تَشَقَّقَتِ السَّمَاءُ لِهَوْلِهِ وَتَشِيبُ مِنْهُ مَفَارِقُ الْوِلْدَانِ يَوْمٌ عَبُوسٌ قَمْطَرِيرٌ شَرُّهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ مُنْتَشِرٌ عَظِيمُ الشَّانِ if they knew the reality of Qiyamah, their hair will become white. Yawmay yaj'alul wildan a sheba. A person's got an interview for a job, he loses sleep. He's got an interview for a visa, he loses sleep. He's got an interview for a travel, he loses sleep, he becomes insomniac. What about the interview for Allah? The way you're dealing and you're cheating in your business is a reflection. So Allah says, if you are demanding your full, that's fine. Yes, tofun. But why is it when you need to give others? So one chapter of the Quran speaks about those who usurp the wealth of people. May Allah protect us. You see, deen and Islam is complete, my brother. A lot of times we separate our religious matters and our financial matters. The nation of Shu'aib alayhi salatu wasalam, they said, uh, okay, we would listen to you in certain things, but don't interfere in our monetary matters. The nation of Shu'aib alayhi salam said, okay, yeah, it's fine. This you can tell us, this ritual, this act of worship, but don't interfere in our financial matters. قَالُوا يَا شُعَيْبُ أَصَلَاتُكَ تَأَمُرُكَ أَن نَتْرُكَ مَا يَعْبُدُ آبَاؤُنَا أَوْ أَن نَفْعَلَ فِي أَمْوَالِنَا مَا نَشَاءُ Leave us to do our money matters ourselves. Islam governs every aspect of our life. It regulates and governs each aspect. So how my dealings are, that's very important. If what we generate, Abdullah bin Mubarak rahimahullah said, La an arudda dirhaman min shubha, ahabbu ilayya min an atasaddaq bi sab'i mi'ati alf dirham. La an arudda dirhaman min shubha, to refuse, to decline one doubtful dirham is a greater act of piety than to donate 700,000 dirhams in charity. But no, listen, this is doubtful. I cannot touch this here. I cannot feed this to my family. 
ولقد كان حفص بن عبد الرحمن شريكا لأبي حنيفة في بعض تجارته ولقد كان حفص بن عبد الرحمن شريكا لأبي حنيفة في بعض تجارته حفص بن عبد الرحمن وزي باتنة إمام أبو حنيفة رحمه الله إن بزنس فكان أبو حنيفة يجهز له أمتعة الخز ويبعث بها في بعض مدن العراق so they were in partnership in business. They used to sell clothing and silk clothing, etc. So in a particular business venture in textile and clothing, Imam Abu Hanifa said to Hafs bin Abdul Rahman that this clothing has some defect in it. So when you sell it, then you must inform the prospective buyer that there is a defect. إذا هممت ببيعها فبين للمشتري ما فيها من عيب. إذا هممت ببيعها فبين للمشتري ما فيها من عيب فباع حفص المتاع كله ونسي أن يعلم المشترين بما في الأثواب المعيبة من عيوب So حفص بن عبد الرحمن he went out to sell and he sold all the things and he slipped up to inform the prospective buyer that listen this is defected this is defected. So you can have a camera to monitor you. You can have a police to take guard of you. But the question is, who monitors the monitor? Who guards the guardian? Who is conscious when there is no camera? And that's only the fear of Allah. Nothing else can discipline a human in his life in totality other than the fear of Allah. So how often a woman would say, you know, my husband at home is a different man. Or man would say, my wife at home, she's a different. When nobody sees, he's a different person. She's a different person. There's a report, and I've often mentioned this in my talks of a country in Africa, where it was found that the anti-corruption unit was the most corrupt. The anti-corruption unit was the most corrupt. The point I'm saying, a camera, a monitor, a device can bring about discipline to an extent. The only thing that can bring about Total discipline in the life of a human in every sphere of his life, how he is behaving, is my Allah is watching me. Nothing else. Some of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, when they would be changing their garments, their clothing, in seclusion, in privacy, they would be overwhelmed by modesty and bashfulness that as they undress and remove their clothing, which is an absolute necessity, but momentarily the private area gets unveiled. So in doing so, they would actually crouch down and they would bend forward and they would cover themselves with their chest coming forward to try and camouflage and conceal their private area for the duration while they're ch changing their clothing in absolute seclusion out of modesty that their private area has been exposed. So Allah said, there's no need to subject yourself to that stringent level, for surely even clothing cannot veil Allah. But that is, Allah is watching. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu was walking, and he passed by a young lad who was selling a flock of sheep. So, فَقَالَ لَهُ عُمَرْ مُخْتَبِرًا بِعْنِي شَاتًا Umar رضي الله عنه said, Hey lad, give me one lamb. So the young boy said, إِنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ لِي 
the flock of sheep is not mine's. فقال له عمر مختبرا إنها لسيدي. I'm just working here. It doesn't belong to me. It's for my master. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, tell your master, أكلها الذئب that there were some predators that were roaming the area and a wolf came and devoured it. So the young boy said, فَإِذَا قُلْتُ لِسَيِّدِي أَكَلَهَا الذِّئْبُ فَمَاذَا أَقُولُ لِرَبِّي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَإِذَا قُلْتُ لِسَيِّدِي أَكَلَهَا الذِّئْبُ فَمَاذَا أَقُولُ لِرَبِّي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Point taken, Umar. I can hoodwink my master. I can deceive him. I can tell him if he does a head count, one sheep less. You know what? There were some fox, there were some predators in the area, they devoured one. But here's my question to you, O Umar. If I say this to my master and I buy his confidence and I deceive him, what will I say to my Allah on the day of Qiyamah? That is what Psalm is about. Kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. I can say this to my master, but what will I say to my Allah? So Umar then went to the master and purchased the freedom of this boy. Paid for him and purchased his freedom. And then Sayyidina Umar anhu said to him, Subhanallah, أَعْتَقَدْكَ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَأَرْجُوْ أَنْ تُعْتِقَكَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ أَعْتَقَدْكَ هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَأَرْجُوْ أَنْ تُعْتِقَكَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ That this honesty of yours has secured your freedom in this world. You've convinced me and that's why I've paid for your freedom. I'm optimistic that it will secure your freedom for you in Akhirah. So my brother, what is fasting? You could silently, discreetly have a sip of water or you could nibble something and you could cover your mouth and you could hide it, but what's it? You know very well that Allah is watching you. That level of consciousness that doesn't allow me to break my fast, nullify my fast and lie or to pass wind and pass flatulence and continue with my prayer and nobody would know my ablution is broken, but I know my Allah knows. That same level of consciousness needs to govern my privacy when I am in isolation and I am roaming the net. I mean, you could do that so, just get in the bathroom while you're gargling, sip little water and nobody knows anything. But come the time of iftar, your guilt will eat you. You know you didn't fast. It's the, the consciousness that your creator is watching you. In fact, you're afraid that while I was performing ablution and I was gargling my mouth, inadvertently I fear perhaps a drop or two slipped down my throat. Has this invalidated my fast or not? That's the life of a believer. That's the life of a believer. That's the discipline of a believer. And this is what fast is all about. Why fasting, abstaining from food, drink and desire from dawn to dusk is a ritual. But that's not the be all, that's not the aim. It is a goal to a greater aim. And the greater aim is taqwa. No, I cannot touch this. This is forbidden for me. May Allah grant us that taqwa. So, فَبَاعَ حَفْسٌ الْمَتَاعَ كُلَّهُ Hafs bin Abdurrahman sold everything. وَالنَّسِيَ أَنْ يُعْلِمَ الْمُشْتَرِينَ بِمَا فِي الْأَثْوَابِ الْمَعِيبَةِ مِنْ عُيُوبٍ وَلَقَدْ When he came back and he told him, Abu Hanifa, Oops, I sold it and I forgot to tell the people that you know what, these clothes were defected. And you told me that. وَلَقَدْ أَجْهَدَ نَفْسَهُ فِي تَذَكُّرِ الرِّجَالِ الَّذِينَ بَاعَهُمْ أَثْيَابَ الْمَعِيبَةَ فَلَمْ يُفْلِحْ 
I mean, it's not like going online today and doing a search where I sold to who I sold and get a generated tax invoice and say, okay, you know what, track it here. He couldn't, he applied his mind, I sold where I simply cannot recall. فَلَمَّا عَلِمَ أَبُوْ حَنِيفَةً فَلَمَّا عَلِمَ أَبُوْ حَنِيفَةً When Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, heard that this man sold the defected textile without reducing the price or alerting the prospective buyer, فَلَمْ تَطِبْ نَفْسُهُ وَلَمْ يَسْتَقِرَّ قَرَارُهُ حَتَّى تَصَدَّقَ بِأَثْمَانِ الْمَتَاعِ كُلِّهَا When he heard that, you know what, this is what had happened, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah said that all the revenue that was generated from this entire consignment, uh, consignment and this entire parcel, we will give all the money in charity so that we do not consume any wealth which is tainted. So we often pride ourselves that my son is fasting from the age of eight. My son is fasting from the age of nine, which is great and wonderful. But the fast <coughs> supposed to propel us to a greater goal, and that is taqwa. H how much of that have we accomplished? The aim is just not the fast, the aim is a discipline measure through fasting. And I often say this, it is through fasting and discipline that there's meaning in life. Reflect for a moment, my brother, and ponder for a moment, my sister. Throughout the year, with the grace of Allah, we eat three healthy meals a day. But let's be frank and honest, are we excited for any meal? No, not at all. As much as we have a healthy spread and a levy spread, we're not excited for breakfast. We're not excited for lunch. We're not, you know, uh, excited for dinner. But in the month of Ramadan, a five-year-old to a 55-year-old, a six-year-old to a 66-year-old, for 30 days, everybody's excited for iftar. So what's the secret to happiness? Deprivation. Deny yourself and you'll be excited. Deny and you'll be happy. Suddenly everybody's excited for one meal every day. You walk into the kitchen and just the aroma and just the scent and just the fragrance. And it was what? Moderate deprivation. And that's the secret. Islam is a life of discipline, moderation, discipline. And even in the fasting, what does Allah say? يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah intends easy for you. Allah doesn't intend difficulty for you. So those that are sick, those that are ill, فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ Then you can do your counting on other days. Anyway, coming back to what I was saying, that there are two chapters in the Quran. One speaks about those who usurp the wealth of people, and the other one speaks about those who attack the honor of people. May Allah save us from both. وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ so woe be to those who attack the honor of people on their face or attack the honor of people behind their back. Both is wrong. Right? Ta'an, Mughtab. Ta'an, Mughtab. He's like this, he does this here. Or he's backbiting people. Now Allah speaks about, we were talking about one of the names of Qiyamah is Yawm al-Hasra. I hope you're not forgetting, we taking you around. It's Quran, my brother. One of the names of Qiyamah is Yawm al-Hasra. Yawm al-Hasra. The day of regret, intense regret. And the regret gets greater when you cannot retract or reverse. When you can retract and reverse and undo, then you can still atone and compensate. But when the regret is of a level where you cannot reverse it, you cannot undo it. Right? There's a friend of mine, he says that his dad had disciplined him and told him.
And he's like a young man. Ah, my dad doesn't know. You know what? It's, I'm, I'm cool, man. I'm cool. Yeah? I'm cool. I'm cool. And he says, I ignored my dad. And I was deliberate. And I was provocative. And I was malicious. And I was obnoxious. And I was evil. And I would do all the funky hairstyles. And he says, my dad has passed on. And it's 15 years. Trust me. I simply cannot look into the mirror till today. Because every time I look in the mirror, I have nightmares to look at my hair. And I have flashbacks of what my dad told me. But how naive, how foolish, how silly of me. And I always say, whatever our parents tell us, at some point we would realize that they were correct. And they, out of their selfless nature, will forgive us. But the day you realize it, I don't know if you were able to forgive yourself. Yes, I don't know if you were able to forgive yourself. Like, could I be so silly? Could I be so foolish? What did I do with my life? So Allah says, and I was mentioning, one of the worst regrets is a man who gathers wealth. Listen to this. The day of Qiyamah is the day of regret. Then you got one person who gathered wealth and he didn't spend his money and he died. Then his heirs inherited his wealth. And after inheriting the wealth, they spend that wealth objectively and fruitfully and they earn Jannah. وَالَّذِي جَمَعَهُ فِي النَّارِ And the man who toiled and labored and worked he ends up in hell. So he's like, Allah, but they going to paradise through my money. Like my son is being forgiven because of my money. My brother is, is, is forgiven. And Allah will say, yes, because you hoarded, you amassed, you did not contribute, you did not donate. They came, they inherited it, and they spent it correctly. They spent it correctly. That is why one great scholar said, let it not be that people donate wealth to you or your cause or your organization and they earn paradise for themselves and you misuse their donation and earn hell. Someone donates and they earn paradise and then you who are the recipient in whatever form, you are guilty of misappropriating those funds or the embezzlement of those funds, and Allah forbid you earn hell for yourself. Now, can you possibly imagine the regret of that person? Like, that's my money, man. You're going to paradise and I'm stuck here. So what's the message, my brother? What's the message, my sister? Is that yours is not, أَيُّكُمْ مَالُ وَارِثِهِ أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ مِن مَالِهِ the Prophet ﷺ said, which one of you likes his own wealth more than the wealth of his heirs and inheritors? Who likes his own money? Oh, Nabi of Allah, we all like our own money. Why must we like somebody else's money? We don't like anybody else's, we like our own. And the Prophet ﷺ said, well, yours is what you have invested with Allah. And what is in your pocket is not yours. What I have is not mine. Because as soon as my eyes close, this moves on to someone else. This moves on to someone else. So Allah has given us an opportunity by donation, by contribution, by spending out through that wealth. Imam Shafi'i said, وَإِن كَثُرَتْ عُيُوبُكَ فِي الْبَرَايَا وَسَرَّكَ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهَا غِطَاءُ تَسَتَّرْ بِالسَّخَائِ فَكُلُّ عَيْبٍ يُغَطِّيهِ كَمَا قِيلَ السَّخَاءُ وَإِن كَثُرَتْ عُيُوبُكَ فِي الْبَرَايَا And if you've done a lot of wrong, and who has not done a lot of wrong? Let's be frank and honest, each one of us. وَسَرَّكَ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهَا غِطَاءُ And you want a cover and a lid to conceal so that you're not exposed in this world and you're not exposed in Akhira. Tasattar bis Then your guaranteed way to save yourself, to rescue yourself, 
is generosity. So Allah says in, in, in uh, Surah Al-Humaz, as I was saying, you know, it, it, it describes <coughs> and profiles the condition of so many people out there today. May Allah protect us. Jama'a malan wa'addada. Wow. Just, just process this. He gathers and he counts. He amasses and he reflects. So every little while, oh, oops. Oh, let me see. I got a beep here. Oh, right. Okay. Right. You know how much money you got. You know what you spent. You know your balance, but you just go back on your app. No, is this, a, is this a nice feeling? This is a good feeling. Oh, okay. Okay. Jama'a malan wa'addada. Jama'a malan wa'addada. His whole life is calculating a messing, calculating a messing. Now look at what Allah says. Yahsabu anna malahu akhlada. Does he foolishly think if his numbers of his wealth multiply, it can guarantee him eternity on earth? Umar bin Abdul Aziz, rahimahullah, when Suleiman bin Abdul Malik had built a very beautiful palace, a very palatial, opulent palace. So he asked, he asked Umar bin Abdul Aziz, what's your opinion of my palace? He said, هذا سرور لولا أنه غرور ونعيم لولا أنه عديم وملك لولا أنه هلك وفرح لو لم يعقبه ترح ولذات لو لم تقتل بآفات وكرامة لو صحبتها سلامة هذا, سر... هذا سرور لولا أنه غرور some things you cannot translate, you've got to appreciate it in Arabic. Hada surur, this house, this wealth, yeah, maybe a source of little joy. Lawla annahu gurur. Hope, provided it doesn't deceive you, it doesn't get to you, yeah. Lawla annahu gurur. Wa na'im, lawla annahu adim. And you can call it a source of excitement, provided it's eternal. Wa mulkun, lawla annahu hulkun. And it's a kingdom if it won't be followed by destruction. And it's a source of indulgence provided it's rescued against any misery and misfortune. And it is a means of happiness provided you remain young and the palace remains good. But neither all would remain. It has to change. Things have to evolve. So, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَ Does he think his wealth is going to... Abu Zayd says, uh, I was making tawaf. قِيلَ لِي شَابٌ مِّن بَلْخ مَا تَعُدُّونَ الزُّهْدَ فِيكُمْ While I was making tawaf, a circuit, so a young man from Balkh asked me, what is Zuhd? Zuhd loosely translates not to be attached to this world. But the scholars say, Zuhd doesn't mean that you don't possess the world. It means the world mustn't possess you. Simple as that. Zuhd means the world mustn't possess you. Mas Zuhdu indakum. So I said, إِذَا أَكَلْنَا وَجَدْنَا وَإِذَا فَقَدْنَا صَبَرْنَا When we have, we eat. When we don't have, we make sabr. So he said, Hakada Aindana Kilabuna. Hakada Aindana Kilabuna. Or oh, that definition of Zuhud is even found in, in the dogs of my city. When they got, they eat. When they don't, they persevere. So I said, Okay, then Mazzuhud Aindakum. He said, Ida Wajadana Atharna. Wa Ida Fakadana Sabarna. Ida Wajadana Atharna. When Allah gives us, we use it as an opportunity to give those who don't have. And when we don't have, we join those that never had. Wow. Kalla la yumbadhan fi al-hutama wa ma adraka ma al-hutama. No, 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 no. 
His wealth will not give him eternity. He will be hurled into a crusher. Hutama is one of the names of hell. Hutama, Lada, Sa'ir, Hawiya. These are names of hell. So Hutama means a crusher. You know what's a crusher? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَ You know what's a crusher? Allah is asking. نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُوْقَدَ It is the fire of Allah. May Allah protect us. So my brother, I said one of the names of Qiyamah is the day of regret. And no human wants regret. One scholar said an amazing thing. Hakim al-Umma rahimahullah has mentioned this here. He says one day, Allah says, وَأَنذِرُهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ He says, one day I boarded a train in India and uh, we were going in a particular direction. And so another person hopped onto the train, took his ticket, sat down in the cabin and he did not realize that uh, he was going in the wrong direction. He was quite secured, quite happy, quite settled in his cabin, relaxed. As the train moved on and we stopped at the subsequent station and he looked out, that's the time he realized I'm going in the wrong direction. And he says, this is the time it dawned upon me. وَأَنذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَةِ إِذْ قُضِيَ الْأَمْرِ وَهُمْ فِي غَفْلَةٍ وَهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ That a deviant individual is in deviation even now. But he doesn't realize it. It's only when he will arrive before Allah will he realize it. This man was astray from the time he sat down in his train. He was going in the wrong direction. Only when he got to the station and the platform did he discover he was in the wrong direction. But he was deviant from the inception. So Allah has given us opportunity. And this is the beauty of Islam that we can earn that happiness of Allah through so many different actions. And mashallah, this masjid of yours and this institution of yours needs your support. Isa alayhi salam said, Man ansari ilallah. Man ansari ilallah. Who are my helpers to Allah? Qala al nahnu ansarullah. The helpers said, the disciples said, we will help you. Fihi mas'alatan. Jawazul istinsar lid-deen min ahli deen Fihi mas'alatan. The scholars write, there's two aspects in this ayah. Isa alayhi salam stood up and what did he say? Oh people help me. People help me. I need the. I need you. Man ansari ilallah. Man ansari ilallah. Who's going to help me? We have a, a parking project here. We need extension here. We need funds here. If you're not going to help and we're not going to invest, then what's the legacy we're leaving behind for our children? Fihi mas'alatan. Jawazul istinsar min ahli din lid din. The ayah impresses upon us the permissibility to reach out to the congregation to mobilize them to support in the cause of deen. That's the call, that's the slogan of Isa alayhi salam to his people. And what more do we learn? So when they responded, they didn't say we are your helpers to Allah. They said we are the helpers of Allah. Which means interacting with the friends of Allah is like interacting with Allah. If you understand in the academics of the ayah. أن فيه مسألتان جواز الاستنصار من أهل الدين للدين وثانيا the second thing is they didn't say when Sayyidina Isa said who are the helpers they didn't say نحن أنصاروك إلى الله 
We are your helpers to Allah. They said, Nahnu Ansarullah. We are the helpers of Allah. And today, once again, your masjid needs your support. The Sahaba, the Ansar, they responded so generously that their name became helpers. Their name became helpers. You know, you say, oh, he eats burgers, he looks like a burger. He looks like one, that's all you say him. Allah says that the Ansar, the Prophet Sallallahu companions, they helped, they responded, they supported so much, so much, so much, their name became helpers. La ilaha illallah. Their name became helpers. Nahnu Ansarullah. That was the name given to them. Why? Because the belief and the understanding was it doesn't belong to me. I'm going to mention one incident and I'm going to wrap up. I was in East Africa, in the deserts of East Africa, and uh, we inaugurated a village with a charity organization, MashaAllah, Al Imdad. It was in rural Kenya. And I was the guest speaker. Hundred homes in a village was inaugurated. It was a hot day. The chieftains, the entire community, the media, everyone had come out to empower people, to add value to the lives of people, to give homes, food, shelter, drinks. And so there were different speakers there. And then final address was my address. And uh, one of the scholars that spoke there, in the desert and you know the entire community came out it was hot it was scorching but it was amazing just to see the, the joy people were getting to transfer them from a tent into a solid house it was just a, a, a fulfilling exhilarating uh, exercise so one of the scholars there spoke about an incident and it's mentioned in the books that in the previous times uh, there was a man who had uh, planted an olive tree. Now, if you know, an olive tree takes a long time to grow. An olive tree doesn't grow overnight. It takes a year, it takes two years for it to mature, for it to evolve, for it to grow at its uh, complete form. So, uh, the king asked him, the emperor asked him, that anta rajulun laka sinnun ta'inun fi sinni you so old you so aged and you're planting an olive tree do you think you will live to see this produce like are you real you are so old and by the time this tree grows and matures and gives off its produce probably you'll be gone he said, Zara'a man qablana fa'akalna wa nahnu nazra' likay ya'kula man ba'dana. Zara'a man qablana fa'akalna. Those that came before us were not selfish, they were selfless. They planted the trees and they passed on. We sitting in the shade of their trees and we harvest in their crops. I am planting a tree and investing not for myself, but investing for my children and the generation to come. So the king was intrigued by this answer. فَأَمَرَ الْمَلِكُ The king said, give him an award. Give him a gift. What a great answer. So he gifted him a handsome amount. So this person said, Ma asra'a gharasi. Ma asra'a gharasi. Subhanallah, my plantation has yielded produce instantly. I just planted it and I'm already getting fruits.
So the king said, Amara lahu bija'izatin ukhra. Give him another gift. So he was given another gift. So this farmer said, Anasu yuthmiruna fi sanati marratan. Wa ana uthmiru fi sa'ati marratain. Some people get one produce per annum. I got two produce in a minute. So the king said, Intaliku bina. فَلَوْ وَقَفْنَا عَلَى هَذَا الرَّجُلِ لَمْ يَكْفِهِ مَا فِي خَزَائِنِنَا You know what? This man is so smart and wise and calculated. The way he is replying, I don't think I have adequate in my treasures to please him. My treasures will be depleted. My message is, a society grows great. A society grows great. When you plant a seed, knowing very well that you won't live to see the shade of that seed. But one boy will have lunch here under that tree. One man will pray under that tree. One person will take refuge under that tree. And that's an enough accomplishment for me. And hence I'm planting the seed. On that note, I ask you with Ramadan at the doorstep. And this being your organization. A place where our children can come and for the generations to come. Remember, recently I spoke at a masjid where a hifz completion took place. And all the time we are invited for this. And the imam made a very profound prayer. He said, today, we don't only pay tribute to the young man completing hafiz. And we don't only pay homage to the teacher. But we pay tribute to the founding fathers of this institution. Those who came and laid the bricks of this institution that today our children can memorize the Quran yeah, and read Taraweeh. And I'm optimistic, inshallah, as the Honorable Imam will come forward and put before you the proposals. Each one of you will dig deep into his pocket so that each one of us can plant our seeds so that our children can come and reap and harvest the fruits of our plantations. The best nation is donation. May Allah bless you all.